G'day guys, thanks for tuning in. Now, I've just been out here camping for three or four days and I've found an awesome new island. But the reason for this episode is I actually want to recap and share with you some of the coolest footage I've ever captured. Uh, the last couple of weeks on different reef trips is just been so much cool stuff going on. So sit tight, I've got about half hour to spare at the moment while we're waiting for that tide to do the right thing. So I'm just gonna relive some of these moments. Now we're heading out to the reef and it was one of those glassy days where it's just so calm. And at the front of the boat, there was these two dolphins that were just riding the bow wave. But because it was so calm, it honestly felt like they were just there. You could reach down and like touch their blowholes. They were that close, it was incredible. But then what happened after that is We've got this balbus bow, that's a, that's a mouthful, but yeah, balbus bow at the front of the boat and these dolphins just started doing tricks around the bow. And it was so crazy, I'd never seen anything like that. This was just something so cool. He was just showing off, he was doing these tricks. It was so impressive. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, shit's about to go down here. I find it so interesting, different animals interacting with each other. Are they gonna be mates? Are they gonna bully each other? Are they gonna try and eat each other? Like, what's about to go down here? Anyway, as the dolphins peeled off towards this pod of false killer whales, there was like this awkward moment where they're like, oi, are we mates or what's the go? They ended up just interacting and just sort of like hanging out for a bit. And I was like, wow, that's sick. I've, I've personally never seen that. You know, a pod of false killer whales and a pod of dolphins hanging out together. That was really, really cool. The false killer whales, they're a bit shyer, so they sort of kept their distance, but these two dolphins, they're two mates, they came right back to the back of the boat, and it's like, man, they were so friendly. I thought they wanted to jump on board and hang out, hey. Off the back of the boat, I could have reached down and given one a high five, like, they were just right there, it was so cool. Yeah, they were making these different clicking noises at us and doing these flips upside down, like, they were just showing off. It was, it was really, really incredible. to the reef the conditions hadn't changed they were still that perfect glassy glassy day this is a prime time for drone snorkeling if you haven't tried drone snorkeling yet get on it it's a new thing it's a craze it was a perfect day for it I generally fly down the reef edge waiting for something to stand out like this colorful steep head parrotfish that's just cruising over the top of the reef he's actually copping a hard time from a six bar wrasse that's super territorial and giving him a bit of a nip on the tail It's so cool how all these different species have got their own characteristics and there's no prizes for why this guy's called a parrotfish. He looks like a parrotfish, he swims like a parrotfish, flies, and he's also got the beak of a parrot. Really cool stuff. And I spotted the largest reef fish we get here in Australia, Queensland groper. I'm going to play on that footage. So the coolest thing happened today, I was flying the drone and it was so calm that you could see like every little ripple on the surface from the fish. And then I spotted this huge shadow, what it was, it was a Queensland groper. They're the largest reef fish we get here in Australia and it was massive. Like it dwarfed the bommy next to it, it was huge. These guys are 
pretty rare out here, so I was so stoked to see it on the drone, but I just had to get in there for a closer look. As I swam down, he was actually pretty timid and swam away from me. But then, over the next about 30 minutes, what I was doing, I was swimming down to the bottom, hiding behind some coral and making some noise. And he was actually getting really curious and coming closer and closer. And then over time, I could see he was getting more and more confident. To the point where, by the end, I was literally playing hide and seek with this like 300 kilo Queensland groper. I was going down to the bottom, hiding behind a bit of coral, making some noise. And then sure enough, he'd come charging in to find me. It was just like playing with a big puppy dog. It was honestly incredible. Yeah, I was frothing after that. And then actually a couple of weeks later, headed out to the same reef and uh, we had the same dreamy conditions, glassy, glassy calm. So sure enough, drone went up, big day of drone snorkeling ahead. And what I spotted with the drone this time was this school of GTs. And I mean, anyone who's been fishing or likes fishing knows how hard sometimes it is to find these GTs. You fish all day looking for them. And then like just watching them completely uh, uninterrupted from the sky, it was just so, so cool. And I really like the drone snorkeling as opposed to the normal snorkeling because it's the fish don't even know you're there. Like they're completely just going about their own business. Whereas when you're snorkeling, they are a little bit tentative they know you're there they're a bit standoffish but these gts were just staunching across the reef edge and i'm like man this is like the moment that little sports fishermen want to find hey it was so cool two of these gts actually peeled off and went towards this bommy and i'm like oh where are they going went over and guess what i spotted it was my big mate the queensland groper on the front of this bommy i'm like what that's so cool a couple of weeks later But then, as I continued to film him, another one popped out. There's two of them. So there was now two Queensland groper on this one rock. And it was actually at this time of the year, it's um, the coral fish closure. So it means that they've worked out, this is when all the reef fish are spawning. So I reckon what he's got going on there, that's his missus. And I didn't want to bloody get in there and interrupt, but I reckon he's about to throw a fin over and they're gonna spawn and hopefully create Queensland Groper babies for like hundreds and hundreds of years to come. So that was so sick. I'll keep spying on him and I'll, I'll keep his poster with how his love affair's going and hopefully it all works out for the big fella. When flying the drone, I've been finding these crazy big cracks and caves through the reef. You just can't help but think what's hiding or living in there. So I just had to jump in and check them out. And it seems everywhere you look out here at the reef, there's somewhere else cool to explore. Whether it's the reef top with some beautiful colourful coral, or a cave or a deep swim through, there's just so much cool stuff to check out. in perspective these caves and swim throughs come from one tiny section on the reef and when you fly out and zoom out with the drone you're like oh there's another cool crack there to the left what about that one to the right and then there's literally hundreds of these places to explore and everything you see here makes up just one reef and there's 2,900 reefs on the Great Barrier Reef 
There's literally a lifetime of places to explore. Thanks for watching this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. Some of that uh, nature footage is the most favorite stuff I've ever captured on film. So I really hope you guys got a kick out of it as well. Uh, the episode here, camping on the island, I should have already edited that by the time you're watching this. So I'll leave, um, I'll leave a link to that in the description. Um, in the meantime, you can follow us on, I think we're on Facebook, Instagram, all that other nonsense, but better still, hope to see you out here. Cheers.